Hello everyone, it's me, Sanjay Vasu, back again for another video. This time I'm doing it on the Cambridge Low Secondary Checkpoint for Mathematics Paper 1, October 2023. This time I'm doing part 2 of a two-part series where I cover question 16 all the way to 27. Let's start. Question 16, construct an angle of 30 degrees. The construction has been started for you. We can see that this construction is the construction of an equilateral triangle. So when we connect these two points to the third point, we'll notice that all three sides are going to be equal and therefore it's equilateral. And therefore all three angles are going to be 60 degrees. Because we know that all three are 60 degrees, we can bisect one of these angles to get 30 degrees in them. So let's do the angle bisection process. I don't have a real compass to show you, but I'll show you how to do it. We take a length, let's say this is x centimeters, and this x value can be anything which is less than the length of this line. So we can mark a compass mark over here, an arc there, and one arc here. Now using that same length x, we mark two more arcs from these two points on the compass, and they have to intersect at a point. And when we connect this corner of the triangle to the point, you'll get the bisected 30 degree angle. That's the answer. Now you can go to question 17. A function is defined by the function machine. Input times two cube output. A, complete the table. Input is five. Output will be five times two, the whole cube. That's 10 cube, which is thousand. Next is 3 by 2. Now if you multiply this by 2, we get 3. Now 3 cubed is equal to 27, which is going to be our output. That's the answer. B. Calculate the input when the output is 64. Let's call the input x. So 2x, the whole cube, is equal to minus 64. 2x is equal to minus 4, so x is equal to minus 2. That's our answer. Input is minus 2. Question 18, Pierre spins the fair spinner twice. He adds together his two numbers to get a total. Pierre makes two statements. Take to show if each statement is true or false. The possible totals are 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. This is correct. Since 2 is possible, 1 plus 1. 3 is possible, 1 plus 2. 4 is possible, 1 plus 3 or 2 plus 2. 5 is possible, 3 plus 2. And 6 is possible, 3 plus 3. 1 is not possible, by the way, because the least value you can get is 1 plus another 1 in the second spin, so the least value is 2. You can't get 1. Next, the probability that the total is 3 is 1 by 5. Well, the total number of possible outcomes is 9, because 3, we have 3 different options here, and then we have 3 different options on the second spin. So 3 times 3 is 9, so there's 9 different outcomes. And to get a total of 3, we can spin 2 on the first spin and 1 on the second one. Or we do the reverse. 1 on the first, 2 on the second. And this is 2. So total probability that the total is 3 is 2 by 9. So 1 by 5 is not correct. We get it false. That's the answer. Now I can go question 19. Solve 2x minus y equals 17. x plus 3y equals minus 2. We can label this as equation 1, equation 2. Now we can multiply equation 2 times 2 to get 2x plus 6y equals minus 4. Why are we doing this? Because we can equate the x coefficients now. So we can write, let's say this is equation 3, we store it, and 3 minus 1, since both of them are positive 2, the coefficients of x. So we can do 2x plus 6y equals minus 4, 2x minus y equal, equals 17, and subtracting this, we get 7y equals minus 21, so y equals minus 3. Now substituting this, 2x minus, minus 3 is equal to 17. This is equation 1, by the way. And 2x is going to be equal to 14, so x equals 7. That's the answer x equals 7, y equals minus 3. Question 20. Draw the graph of y equals x squared plus 2 for our values of x between minus 3 and 3. 
you may use the table to help you. x equals minus 3, y is equal to minus 3 the whole squared plus 2. That's 11. Now for x equals minus 2, y equals 6. And using a similar procedure, we can write down all the values. And drawing the graph, we can just plot the points. 3, 11, minus 2, 6, minus 1, 3, 0, 2, 1, 3, 2, 6, 3, 11. And we get a smooth curve, somewhat like this. Of course, I'll just extend it a bit. And there we go, we have a smooth curve. That's the answer. Question 21, a quartz lat well has an area of five centimeters squared. It's enlarged by shale factor four. Calculate the area of the enlarged quartz lat well. So that'll be equal to five times the scale factor squared. We're squaring it due to area enlargement, which means the area is being increased. Why specifically area? Because you're trying to calculate the area of the enlarged quad lateral using the 5 cm squared original. So we can say the area of the enlarged quadrilateral is going to be 80 cm squared. That's the answer. Question 22. The 20 children in class A and 20 in class B. Each child completes a test. The back-to-back -back stem and leaf diagram shows some of the marks scored by the children. The highest mark for class B is not included. A. The range of marks for class A is the same as range of marks for class B. Complete the diagram for class B by writing in the highest mark. For class A, the range of marks is going to be the highest minus lowest. 56 minus 14. So the range is equal to 56 minus 14, which is 42. This is the same for class A and B. That's what's given in the question. And now to get a range of 42 for class B, we have the smallest value 0, 8. And the highest mark for class B is going to be equal to 42 plus the smallest value 8, which is 50. Now you can just add that in the stem and leaf diagram. Under the 5 row, we can write a 0 over here. B, tick to show if each conclusion is true or false. A total of five students in the two classes scored less than 15 marks. Let's check that. So there's one, two, three, four, five. That's correct. How do we know that? Because when you combine the tens digit with the ones digit on both sides, we'll get 10, 13, eight, nine for this side. And over here is 14. All of less than 15, so that's five students, and that's correct. The model mark for class A is greater than the model mark for class B. Well, the model mark for class A is 30, since that's the most repeated mark. It's repeated three times. 10 is 3, 1 is 0. So this is going to be 30. And the model mark for class B is going to be 24, since that's the only one which is repeated twice. So this 30 is greater than 24, so this is also true. That's the answer. Now I can go to question 23. Question 23. The diagram shows some information about two rectangles. Rectangle A. Width and length are not given. The ratio is 5 to 2. Perimeter is 56 centimeters. And the perimeter of rectangle B is the same, but its width and length ratio is not given. The length of rectangle B is 2.5 centimeters less than the length of rectangle A. Calculate the ratio length is to width for rectangle B. Well, now the perimeter is 56 and length is to width equals 5 to 2. That means length is equal to 5 by 2 times width. Right? Or you can write L equals 5 by 2 W. And we can write the perimeter of rectangle A, I'll write as P sub A, is equal to 2 into L plus B, which is equal to 2 times 5 by 2, B plus B. Why am I writing that? Well, width can also be written as breadth. And I'm used to saying length plus breadth, although it's given width here. So I'm just writing 5 by 2, B plus B, which is going to be 7, B at the end when you multiply by 2. And that's 56 centimeters. Now, B is equal to 56 by 7, which is 8 centimeters. And the length... is going to be 
5 by 2 times 8, that's 5 by 2 times the breadth, which is equal to 20 centimeters. Now the length of rectangle B is 2.5 centimeters less. 20 minus 2.5, 17.5 centimeters. Now if the perimeter is 56 centimeters, that means the length plus the breadth is going to be equal to 56 by 2, 28 centimeters. And the length we know is 17.5. So the breadth is going to be equal to 17.5 subtracted from 28, right? Which is equal to 10.5 centimeters. And now the ratio is going to be 17.5 is to 10.5 for length is to width. And we can simplify this to 35 to 21 by multiplying by 2 and dividing both sides by 7, 5 is to 3. Question 24. The term to term rule of a sequence is multiplied by 2. The first term of the sequence is 8. The sum of the first term and third term is 35. Work out the sum of the first two terms. So the first term is 8 and the second term will be 2a multiplying by 2. Third term is 4a and goes on. So the sum of these two, first and third terms, is 35. So a plus 4a, which is 5a, equals 35. So a equals 7, which is the first term. Now the second term, 2a, is going to be 7 times 2, right? Because a equals 7, so 2a is 14. Now the sum of the first two terms is a plus 2a, which is 7 plus 14. And that's equal to 21. That's the answer. Question 25. 0.45 times 10 to the power p equals 4,500. And 5070 0, 0 times 10 to the power q equals 0 0.0507. Find the value of 0 0.038 divided by 10 to the power of p plus 2q. Well, 0 0.45 times 10 to the power p equals 4,500. That means 10 to the power of p is equal to 4,500 by 0 0.45, which is equal to 10,000. And 10 to the power of 4 is 10,000, so that means p equals 4. But in other words, you can write this as 10 to the power of 4, so p equals 4. Now as for the second one, 5070 times 10 to the power of q equals 0 0.0507. So 10 to the power of q is equal to 0 0.0507 by 5070, which is equal to 0 0.40 divided by 1, if we do it correctly. And this can be written as... 10 to the power of minus 5 and that means q is equal to minus 5 so 0 0.038 divided by 10 to the power of p plus 2q that's what we need to find 10 to the power of 4 plus 2 times minus 5 so that's 0 0.038 divided by 10 to the power of minus 6 and this is equivalent to multiplying by the negative power but because it's already negative adding another negative to it just cancels that negative out so it's 10 to the power of 6 multiplication and we get if we did it correctly 38,000 question 26 a polygon has seven sides the mean of the size of the six smallest angles is 115 calculate the size of the largest angle so the sum of these angles is equal to 115 times 6, the mean times the number of angles, which is going to be 690 degrees. Now, the sum of all angles, or all interior angles, is going to be equal to 180 times the sides minus 2, 180 times 7 minus 2, which is 900 degrees. Now, the size of the largest angle is equal to 900 minus 690, which is simply 210 degrees. That's the answer. Now going to question 27, the solution x to the equation 4x equals 12 minus px is an integer. p is a positive integer and find a possible value of p. Well, so 4x plus px equals 12, bringing px to this side. That means x times 4 plus p is equal to 12 x is equal to 12 by 4p and which is equal to an integer right and p is a positive integer so if you want to make x as an integer we need to have p equals 2 or p equals 8 right only then we can get 12 by 6 is equal to 2 that's an integer or 12 by 12 which is equal to 1 also an integer 
Note that p cannot be zero because p is a positive integer. Therefore, you can write p is equal to two or eight. I'm just gonna write two because they only ask for one possible value of p. That's the answer. With that, I come to the end of the paper. Please like this video, subscribe to our channel, share this video with your friends and family, and comment on how you think this video was. With that, it's me, Sanjay Vasu, signing out. Thank you. Bye.